Okay, hey guys, what's up YouTube? It's Rob again, and we're gonna be doing some more experiments uh, regarding my magnetic atom slash magnetic waveform theory. Um, the other thing I was thinking about calling this was a polarity wave. I think maybe that's the best way to describe what's going on here. So hopefully this is good here. All right, that's good. So uh, we're starting out again, same scenario. You can see these are non-magnetized. I didn't have a brand new pack. I could use it if I wanted to, but those are little, so I didn't want to do that. So I'm just starting these non-magnetized nuts here, and we'll be doing something else with those later. So I'm gonna do a couple things on this video, and I'm gonna clarify a couple things from the last video that folks had questions about. Um, so first of all, the big question was, uh, a lot of people think I'm just creating an electromagnet here, which would be impressive considering I'm not hooking the wire up to the uh, nuts at all. So I would be creating an electromagnet if that's what I was doing, it would be, going th it would be creating it through the air um, without ever touching the circuit itself. Um, so if that's, if that's the case, then that's pretty cool in itself. Like how did that even happen? But since there's, you know, the, I'm actually not hooking it up to the circuit, I don't think we can really say that that's an electromagnet. And also, I think I can prove pretty well that these things, even when they're being held together, they are not magnetized. And uh, so I have an experiment to show that. And also, I'm going to show you with these little pieces of paper what happens, you know, how we can, uh, well, I'll, show, I'll get to that in a second. Um, so first of all, we're just going to start out by uh let's just uh capture a quick waveform here um it's really dangerous to dead short a battery guys as you can see you know there's like some of the this those little specks on the battery there are like little bits of the wire that arcs off every time i do it so um yes it is dangerous so for god's sake be careful and i don't recommend that anyone do this um i'm not saying do this because it is dangerous uh to mess with this um, so we're going to just start out here. We're just going to do, let's just capture the waveform. So again, you just take your, you take your, your nuts here, your non-magnetic nuts, and you just get them lined up just like that, right? Touching each other right around the hole in that you've drilled in your, whatever you want to put it on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be wood. It can be anything. Um, I wonder, I wonder how it would work if I did it on something metallic. That would be interesting to try. Um, however, just the wood for now. Got lots of experiments to do. And the other question I had that was a pretty good question is, what happens if you do an AC short? Because I'm D this is a DC short here. So um, th that's a quick good question. I, d I don't know, to be honest with you. So that's on the list of things to test. Um, I wanted to you know start this i don't know if it would work so um i that's a good question um uh, in any case all right let's get clipped out here um because the reason being is that the dc short is a square wave and an ac short would be a sine wave and i don't know if a magnetic imprint of a of a sine wave would have the same effect like a magnetic so it would be a magnetic sine wave i don't know if it would have the same effect all right so just run it up through the middle get it nice and square and then just quick arc all right should be all we need let's just unclip this we're nice and safe that was really dumb to do it the way i did it there sorry all right let's get that off there nice and safe and as you see just like that not never touched it they're already stuck together all right so right there we see them them holding each other so the <clears throat> right now my theory is that there's a magnetic or a polarity wave traveling through there uh now if they were magnetized now these are not super stable you can't just you know throw them around the room or anything but they are being held in place just fine okay so if these were magnetic if those were magnets if i created electromagnet those would be holding on there and they're obviously not 
So, you know, you see, it doesn't hold. Nope, oh, I broke it. So as, as soon as you break the circuit, the whole thing falls apart. But okay, so we we see that it was not, you know, it wasn't. Ma they're not magnetized. They're only holding a magnetic waveform. So the other thing I wanted to show to kind of go along the way of proving that. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Only this time. So we see it doesn't hook up to the fridge. Nothing. So we're going to do it like this this time. But okay, so they're all there. But this time I'm going to put a couple little pieces of paper here and then a piece here and then just make sure they're nice and tight so get out of the way of the hole so get those nice and tight in there so same thing same idea here but now we've got some paper in between essentially creating an open circuit in my mind for as far as polarity goes now if it was just magnetized they would like magnets would see right through a piece of paper that thin that's not going to stop any kind of a permanent magnetic field so let's see what happens when you do it like this i could come up i got to come up with a better setup for this i need a longer wire for starters So just come up in the middle. The size of the hole didn't seem to make too much difference. Oh. It's all together. gave it a good shot that time too so if it was gonna work it definitely would have all right so you can see already oh it did it, it's there it's it goes through those a little bit now if I use it's a little bit in there but it did not work very well like I think there might have been a little bit of connection so It's nowhere near as strong. Like I can't, I can't even really. It did go through it a little bit, but I can't. You see, it kind of just falls right apart. It does. Those were pretty effective in blocking the waveform. It did hold it a tiny little bit together, but those were pretty effective in blocking the waveform. Those tiny little things. So why? Well, because the uh, the well, compounds that these paper is, this paper is made out of is non-ferrous. So it doesn't provide a good solid medium to hold a magnetic waveform, which is these ferrous, um, you know, these metals that are, you know, capable of being magnetized. You know, this, this is, th those are the ones that are going to hold the waveform better. Now, why is that? You're going to have to get in depth into my theory about how matter is arranged and how these atoms are built together and, you know, what exactly is going on. Um, <clears throat> basically, it has to do with the ability of the nucleus, like that you separate the nucleus from the electromagnetic field that surrounds the nucleus. Now, whether or not the nucleus itself can uh, rearrange or follow along uh, to changes in the magnetic field is what makes one element mag uh, magnetic or able to be magnetized and one not. The ones that can follow along and, and um, adjust to adjust their, uh, their actual positions to... Uh, follow along with the polarity of their magnetic fields, those ones are magnetic. The ones that can't 
are non-magnetic essentially so the that's basically and it all comes down to the shape of the atoms like you know i i like to use cubes and spheres as good examples okay so you know if these were but it but this will kind of work too so if these were the way atoms are arranged as you see there on my uh with my nuts there uh if these were th that's kind of and that's kind of how they are now if one of those um then just use it as a 2d sort of representation so if 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 the magnetic field on one of the the center nut changed for whatever reason the nut itself wouldn't be able to move along with it and the magnetic field would sort of snap back as soon as the um whatever it was that caused it to be polarized passes by so it, it will snap back um because this can't move that's the idea so but if that was a sphere it could move um and sort of follow along and uh follow along with the the change in polarity so the if it was a sphere you could predict it moving and then holding place and then another one comes by and it moves again and another one comes by and it moves again and it makes that a good medium to hold a magnetic waveform now if it can't if it's like this and it can't move it's not a good medium so um or vice versa you know it, it could be either way you know it, it the, the point is the atoms themselves are at a natural state are relatively still and what we're doing is we're sending a pulse through their magnetic fields and those magnetic fields are, are resetting essentially and uh it, it, that's what you know as the, it passes by it peaks and then they reset and then it comes by again and it peaks again and it resets and that um, peak versus reset is what causes the uh, what i it's well that's what allows the waveform to to exist because you can't just like if it just peaked and left it there um it wouldn't be a good uh a good medium so it's, it's probably the the latter is what i'm guessing so one more thing i want to test here today is this i want to show you guys this it's kind of interesting so i'm going to do the same old gig here except i wanted to kind of see how far out i could get the waveform to travel so i'll do it like this so it does hold it you know and the thicker you use the better um the less it's going to obviously be able to pass through there because these have electromagnetic fields too there is electromagnetic fields on the matter in here so the waveform can pass through them a little bit and you saw that but um not very well M certainly much less than there so this is what i'm going to do now and maybe i can get some kind of a, a range or something or maybe like so i haven't done this yet but this is what i wanted to test actually just just like that so set this up here I go like this Make sure those are all nice and tucked. Ah. The larger holes are actually much worse. Need another set of hands, really. hands okay, I'm able to balance it there if I can use two hands you'll probably fall and I'll be wasting my time but saw that coming just need another set of hands okay 
I'll try it again. Try not to break it this time. Maybe I'll use this other one out here. See if I can use this little one. That's a little easier. will work. I can just go over that hole. It shouldn't matter. I was thinking they might fall in it. Alright, that's fine. That's plenty. And I'll put this one out here like this, just for fun. So I've not done this before, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. Okay. Just tighten everything up. All right, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I gotta cut that off. I've gotta cut that. I need a new wire because it's arcing so much now. It's um, like auto melting right to it, which is obviously very, very dangerous. All right, so let's get this out of there. So I guess we can sort of already see what's happened. We did not go through the ones that were touching it there, at least not as far as I can tell. Nope. So the circuit is magnetized and nothing that touched it. So it went through. So it, it, it's, it definitely locked these down. It locked these down real good. But these are really tight now. Probably because it's such a strong signal I sent through there. Um, it's a pretty big waveform in there right now. These are, that's the tightest I've had them. Those are freaking really tight in there. Um, way more tight than you can see with the paper when the paper was in there so that's that's really strong all right so that'll be enough for today with this one and I'm gonna retire that um, because that is that's getting dangerous now um, this whole thing is dangerous you can see what's happening to the uh, terminal there as I do this you can see what's happening to the term terminal so um, yeah, this is dangerous guys to just be really really careful if you're messing with this at home because this is not the way batteries were meant to be used, but in any case um, Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take that O scope and I'm gonna put an induction coil right along near here and see if I can induce a voltage because as this waveform it's traveling through there, and this one's on. These, this, I got a good one in there. Um, as it's traveling through there, uh, it should, I hope, I, I hope it will induce voltage across an induction coil. And if, if it does, that would be gigantic. If I can induce any kind of, any kind of electricity through an induction coil from this, I think that would be like, the start of a whole new power source because what would be powering or what would be inducing it is something that will never end it'll stay like that forever it will it will never it will the waveform if you leave it alone it'll never leave now i've already messed with it you see it's kind of like bent and the more you play with it and the near you like the more contact you have with it the more it degrades the waveform so it's best to be left alone it's definitely best to be left alone. Um, okay, so that's good for today. So we, we saw some some uh, interesting stuff. So what I, I wanted to see if any of those would work. Now what I have done, I what I did there was with the line of these has not worked. But what has worked in the past is when I did it like this. When I go like this and make like a snowflake pattern 
it captures the whole, it, the whole thing holds together. I, I'm not going to show you now because I got to make a new wire. Um, this one, I'm yeah. I need to probably need some thicker wire. This is decent, but that got really hot. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm getting a little concerned there. I'm I'm no kind of a safety expert, so you know I, I'm I'm getting close to the point where I'm starting to not feel super comfortable uh, just dead shorting this battery over and over with the same thing. But this like this, I mean, you can imagine. Uh, this works fine. That will hold them like that. But what it won't do is hold them like this. Probably because, you know, there's no, there's no need for it. I wish I, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to do it one more time real quick, just so I can show you. Well, nah, nah, that's it. So I will break it one more time. And this time, the way I'll break it is just, well, there it goes. It just fell over. And as soon as it falls over, you see, as soon as the connection breaks, there's nothing to hold it together anymore. So I would like somebody who understands magnetics and electricity to explain to me how if these are not magnets, they're holding together. And if they are magnets, why don't I have a magnetic field around them? Why aren't they attracting uh, ferrous material? I need, I mean, these are obviously magnetizable. We know that. So that should be attracting those. Um, and where does it go? That's the other real question. If they are magnetized and I had created an electromagnet, why does breaking the circuit take away the magnetization? I don't know electromagnets that work that way. So uh, let me know guys, this is a good secondary um, tutorial. So uh, this, this wasn't as the paper um, in, in front of the uh, things wasn't as dramatic as I had hoped because I've done I've done it before where they it just didn't catch it at all I probably need to use just a little bit thicker paper or something like that but the point is that it the material obviously matters you can't use non-ferrous stuff so it wants a clean path it's just like a regular circuit just the same way electricity wants a nice clean circuit to travel longer so does magnetism it needs a nice clean uh, circuit like a a, a nice and, and in this case, it wants to get something useful. It needs the infinite path. Like it's just like, it's sort of like, it's if you drop a pebble in the river or in, in a still lake, what happens? It creates waves. Now, if that lake or river was in a perfect circle and you dropped a pebble in it, what would happen? The wave would go on and on and on forever. But, I mean, in real life that doesn't happen because there's a lot of other things involved because there's friction between the atoms and there's air resistance and there's a lot of other factors. But with the magnetic wave, same principle except we don't have those restricting factors. We don't have friction. We don't have air resistance. We don't have anything. The only thing that, is, the only thing that it's susceptible to is either mechanical disruption of it, like if you move these around and like mess with them too much, even if they're holding together, even just the, the lateral motion of it messes with it, like it degrades the quality of the waveform inside or the coherence of the waveform. Because obviously, like if you think about it and you're messing with it, even if you keep the thing. So you can, you can break the circuit that way. Um, just by messing with it and degrading the waveform to the point where it's no longer polarizing. Um, so, that, you know, so just as a, that's sort of a, like a crude example so you guys can understand what's going on here. But this is important stuff because if I can induce voltage if, from, that, from that ring, from that circuit, magnetic circuit, if I can induce voltage across a coil and measure it with oscope, you're looking at this, what we, what we would call this, together like that, that's a battery that never runs out. That's what that would be. This right here would be considered a battery that never runs out. You could induce voltage over it, over a coil forever until the end of the universe if nothing happened 
to your waveform if you were able to keep your waveform you know intact the whole time without you know random magnetic fields from the whatever everything that you know we have magnetic fields everywhere but if you could like sh create this then shield it and then hook a coil up to it to induce electric voltage over the coil you could you know power whatever you want you know if, if you could get enough if you can make a big enough version of it you could power a light bulb forever so maybe that's what i'll do if i can find a way to um and the problem is is like something like this is going to be very very small and i'm worried that it, the voltage it would induce over a coil would be so small that the oscope wouldn't pick it up so i gotta get so that that's my concern um Anyway, so thanks for watching, guys. We did a little bit more on this. And uh, let me know. Keep your comments rolling in and your questions. Uh, we'll get this figured out one way or another. But uh, this is how this right here, what I'm doing here, I, I personally believe, is the true nature. We're, we're now trying to demonstrate the true nature of matter and energy and how atoms and the subatomic particles, neutrons, protons, and their s component parts, the quarks, and all of your boats, both uh, leptons, etc., and fermions, and all of this. What are the, you know, you can keep asking the question, what's it made of? What's it made of? What's it made of? And you got to come down to an ultimate answer. And my ultimate answer is that everything is made of photons. And that is why we, we have electromagnetic fields over all stable matter all matter period stable or unstable has surrounded by an electromagnetic field um, but we can have magnetic fields with no matter so you can separate magnetism from matter but you can never separate matter from magnetism that's very very critical and important now we will say that there's you know these things called virtual photons which are photons you can't see or detect in any way that account for a static magnetic field at least that's what conventional science will tell you but conventional science will do that you know when they can't see something or they find something that disagrees with their you know proven observations a lot of times they will modify the theory in such a way to allow it to continue but that modification doesn't necessarily have to be true um, so they see uh, matter and they notice that there's electromagnetic field around all matter then they see magnetic fields with no matter so they say well um, you know if, if the photon is what's carrying the electromagnetic force um, for matter then it must be photons that carry the electromagnetic force in static electric fields but since we can't see them we'll just say oh it's virtual like this is the same I have the same problem with dark matter and energy you have this something that you can't detect or can't see you're supposed to cut that out of the theory anything that cannot be vis measured um or you know quantified in some way you're supposed to cut those parts out of the theory so um but yeah they they seem to sort of base whole theories around stuff that we'll never be able to see such as these virtual photons um dark matter and so on and so on and i have different explanations for all of this so anyway that's good for today. Uh, we'll be doing more later. I'm going to try and make this somehow more safe. Please, if you guys are great at, you know, you super electricians out there, help me out so I can maybe do this a little bit more safe. Like, I, I mean, I was going to kind of like put it, like hook it up and like put a switch here so I could just like, you know, like a, a switch to short it or something like that. So if you have an idea of how I could do this more safe, please let me know because uh, I am definitely interested in making this. I want to do a lot of iterations here, but I don't feel super confident doing it um, safely. So I need some help, safety, electric safety guys, or some guy who can, somebody can help me come up with some kind of a rig or setup where I could do these more of these experiments over and over safely. So let me know. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.